Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad, Boa Certified Physician in Cardiology, Interventional Cardiology, and Internal Medicine, certified by the American Board of Internal Medicine. If you are new to this channel, then definitely consider hitting the subscribe button below and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. For my subscribers, thank you for your continued support. Weight loss surgery, also known as bariatric surgery, is a type of surgery that is performed in obese individuals for the purpose of losing weight in order to reduce the incidence of disease related to obesity and to improve health. Obesity is defined as a body mass index BMI of more than 30 kg per square meter and it is a chronic illness in children, adolescents and adults worldwide. In the United States, 35% of adults, which is roughly 100 million people, and 17% of children are obese. The body mass index is calculated by dividing the body weight in kilograms by the square of the height in meters. Individuals are classified as normal weight, with a BMI of 18.5 to 24.9, overweight, BMI 25 to 29.9, Grade 1 obesity, BMI 30 to 34.9, Grade 2 obesity, BMI of 35 to 39.9, and Grade 3 obesity or severe obesity, BMI more than 40. Bariatric surgery is indicated for adults with a body mass index of more than 40 without comorbid illness. Adults with a BMI of 35 to 39.9 with at least one serious comorbidity, such as type 2 diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, OHS, asthma, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and others. Adults with BMI between 30 to 34.9 and one of the following comorbid conditions. Uncontrollable type 2 diabetes, metabolic insulin resistance syndrome. Consideration should be given for race as an example, in Asian patients, the BMI criteria can be lowered by 2.5 per class related to a higher prevalence of truncal obesity, which is felt to be more hazardous than peripherally located fat. There are six main types of bariatric surgeries and procedures. Rho in Y bypass surgery, are commonly known as gastric bypass, remains one of the most commonly performed bariatric procedures. The stomach is divided into a smaller top portion and a larger part of the stomach is bypassed and no longer stores or digests food. The small intestine is also divided and connected to the new stomach pouch to allow food to pass. The advantages of this surgery are that it is reliable and leads to a long lasting weight loss effective for remission of obesity associated conditions. The disadvantages are that it is technically more complex when compared to other bariatric surgeries, leads to more vitamin and mineral deficiencies compared to other surgeries, has risk of small bowel complications and development of ulcers, and that it might cause what is medically known as a dumping syndrome in which individuals get feeling of sickness after eating or drinking. The sleeve gastrectomy. This is partial gastrectomy in which the majority of the greater curvature of the stomach is removed and a tubular stomach is created. The sleeve gastrectomy surgery is technically easier to perform and viewed as a not as drastic by patients. However, it is not Reversible procedure may worsen or cause new onset reflux and heartburn and has less impact on metabolism compared to bypass row and Y surgery. Bilio pancreatic diversion with duodenal switch. This starts with creation of a tube shaped stomach pouch similar to the sleeve gastrectomy. Then the first portion of the small intestine is separated from the stomach and a part of the small intestine is then brought up and connected to the outlet of the newly created stomach. Some surgeons perform this procedure for super 
morbidly obese patients with BMI more than 50 kg per square meter, while others reserve it as a revisional procedure for failure to lose weight or recurrence of weight gain after other procedures. The use of this surgery has been limited by high rates of protein malnutrition, anemia, diarrhea, and stomach ulceration. Single anastomosis duodenal ileal bypass with sleeve gastrectomy. This surgery is similar to the biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch, but is simpler and takes less time to perform. It starts by making a smaller tube-shaped stomach. Then the first part of the small intestine is divided just after the stomach and a loop of intestine is measured several feet from its end and then connected to the stomach. This surgery is highly effective for long-term weight loss and remission of type 2 diabetes. However, the vitamins and minerals are not absorbed as well in, as in other surgeries. There is risk of worsening or developing new onset reflux and risk of looser and more frequent bowel movements. The adjustable gastric band is a silicone-made device that is placed around the upper part of the stomach to limit the amount of food a person can eat, the effect on obesity and the related diseases and long-term weight loss is less than with the other procedures. Because of this, over the past decade, its use has declined. Intragastric balloon. This consists of a soft saline fluid filled balloon that promotes a feeling of satiety and restriction and it's advocated for use as a bridge to a more definitive surgical procedure. It's also approved for patients with class 1 obesity who have a body mass index of 30 to 34.9. The balloon is typically inserted endoscopically and filled with 400 to 700 ml of normal saline fluid, generally for a maximum of 6 months, beyond which time the leak rate increases significantly. A deflated balloon can migrate from the stomach to the intestine and cause bowel obstruction. Remover requires a second endoscopic procedure. There are multiple heart health benefits that individuals gain after bariatric surgery and weight reduction. Here are the well-recognized cardiac outcome effects. Lowering of the high blood pressure. The association between obesity and the development of high blood pressure is well established. 64% of adults with severe obesity seeking bariatric surgery have hypertension. Weight loss, whether by intensive lifestyle medical modification program or bariatric operation, improves obesity-linked hypertension and contributes to its remission. In the gateway trial of 100 patients with hypertension on two or more blood pressure medications, and who were obese with a BMI of 30 to 39.9, the RU-NY bypass surgery reduced blood pressure medications by more than 30% in more patients compared with medical therapy alone at one and three years, and a, and a greater number of patients after surgery achieved cure of the high blood pressure without medication use. Reduction in cholesterol and triglyceride levels. 64% of adults with severe obesity seeking bariatric surgery have dyslipidemia, including high triglyceride levels, decreased high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels, and or increased low-density lipoprotein cholesterol particles. Dyslipidemia is a well-established risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Studies have shown that lipid particles improved after bariatric surgery. In the LABS study, the prevalence of dyslipidemia remains low at 7 years post ruin y gastric bypass surgery compared with baseline levels. Reduced cardiovascular risk due to reduction and improvement of cardiovascular risk factors such as diabetes, hypertension, and high lipids. Bariatric surgery is associated with reduced number of cardiovascular deaths and lower incidence of cardiovascular events in obese individuals. In the American Utah study, compared with controlled patients, the risk of death from coronary artery disease significantly decreased in patients who underwent 
Ru in Y gastric bypass compared to control subjects who did not have the surgery. Obese individuals who undergo bariatric surgery have improved survival. In the Swedish obese subjects study, SOS study, in individuals who undergone bariatric surgery compared to a random sample of the general population who were followed for over 20 years, those who underwent bariatric surgery lived about three years longer than those who did not undergo surgery and only received the usual obesity care. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comment section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter at Dr. Bolad and send me a private Twitter direct message and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and speak to you soon.